Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you my solar system which contains 12 panels, 3.8 kilowatts with 23.5 kilowatt hours battery bank and solar all-in-one inverter. This video is going to be divided to multiple parts. In the first part I'm going to show you history of my system, then I will explain what is the difference between grid tie, off-grid and hybrid solar system, then we'll review all components and see how all of them connected together. Then I'm going to show you cost for each component and the power production, how many kilowatt hours you can expect from system like that in the winter and in the summertime. If you're interested, let's jump into the video. And uh, here's a quick history about evolution of my solar system. I started building this two years back and my first charge controller was PLWMR, which worked with uh, three solar panels, 270 watts each panel. And uh, I had uh, 16 cells of lithium iron phosphate batteries, 150 amp hours each cell, which was controlled by charger BMS. And uh, I had this two kilowatts off-grid inverter. About seven months later, I purchased 32 more cells, 155 amp hours, and I built battery bank with a total capacity of 455 amp hours. And right after building battery bank, I installed 12 panels, 325 watts each panel, and I moved to Outback charge controller and grid tie inverters with limiters. And after about seven months, I realized that I have too many limitations having two grid tie inverters and one off grid inverter. And here's when I decided to move to all in one solar unit. I'm using the system for about eight months and so far I'm happy with this setup and I'm not planning to do any upgrades, maybe just to increase my battery capacity. Let me quickly explain what is the difference between grid tie, off grid and hybrid solar systems. Let's start with more traditional grid tie solar system and uh, right here on the picture we can see house with an electrical panel. We can see this representing grid and right here is a components that is used to build solar systems, solar panels, inverter and the battery. In the grid tie solar system we don't have batteries, all we have is uh, solar panels and one string inverter or micro inverters which is connected to electrical panel, same panel where grid power coming into the house. So how the system works is this inverter interacting with the grid and basically it can push power back to the grid. Right here we have electrical meter which is counting how many kilowatt hours we gave back to the grid. And then we can use this later at night, for example, when solar is not available. Grid tie system is most simple system because usually you don't need to redo your electrical panel. You just need to have space for circuit breaker to connect your inverter. And it's most affordable because you don't need to buy batteries, which is usually most expensive item in uh, solar systems. At the same time, main disadvantage for this system, if grid power going down, then your system is also shutting down. So if you don't have grid power available, then your house will not have any power at all. So second system is uh, off-grid. So right here is a traditional off-grid system. We don't have connection to grid power at all. All we have is the solar panels, off-grid inverter and uh, batteries. And this inverter connected to house electrical panel and basically feeding your house. Some off-grid inverter might have input for AC power. And here's the two options which we can modify our off-grid system. Here's option number one. So we can use grid power as an input source for inverter. And on the inverter side, we can configure what source to use to power your house. So basically we can select that grid power is a primary source and the solar panels and the battery secondary source, or we can reverse this. We can, set, we can configure that solar panels and the battery is a main priority. So we, we're gonna use this power for, to feed house. And when solar is not available or battery is depleted, then we can use grid power. Instead of grid power, we can connect generator as well. And the number two option for grid power is right here. Uh, what uh, what people doing is installing critical load sub panel in the house and uh, rewiring all items and the appliances in the house that needs to be used when grid power going off into critical panel and then this off-grid inverter is going into critical panel powering this panel 
and the grid power is going to the main panel. Additionally, we have switch right here where we can select what kind of source we want to use for a, for a critical load panel. This is most expensive solution because we need uh, to update our panel, install sub panel and uh, move our wires from this panel to that one. But at the same time, uh, in this case, we have grid power available into the house and solar panels and the batteries available when needed. And last part is a hybrid solar system. This is what we're going to see today. This is what I have installed. So how this system works, it's really similar to grid tie solar system. Basically, inverter can work in a grid tie and off grid mode. And this is connected to the same uh, panel as a grid power. And basically in the normal days when we have power available, it's just uh, pushing power as a grid tie inverter. If we have excess of power, we can select where to store this excess. We can push this into the grid or store into the battery. And if grid power becomes unavailable, so grid tie inverter shuts it down. So I'm just switching this inverter from grid tie to off grid mode. And I have switch right here, which is disconnecting house from the grid power. And basically my inverter becomes off grid inverter and just powering my house. The main component for solar system is that this solar unit It's all in one inverter. It has two MPPT charge controllers and it can work in a grid tie and off grid mode. Most of the time it works in a limited power to home mode in my case. So that means so you can see right now my panels producing 2.85 kilowatts. Consumption from the grid is just about 0 to 10 watts and my house consumption is 0 0.4 kilowatts which is produced by this inverter and the rest of the energy is stored into the battery. And um, right here it has inputs for two MPPT charge controllers and uh, here is a circuit breaker for grid tie mode and uh, off grid mode. Additionally, you can set up time when you want to store energy from solar panels to the battery and when to use this. For example, my electric company charging me more money for kilowatt hour from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. So I can program that outside of this time frame, I want to store energy into the battery and from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. use energy from solar panels and the batteries to satisfy my needs. So additionally, it has an input for generator with after start. It could control generator and uh, also you can connect another grid tie solar system to this inverter and it will know how to interact with micro inverters or another grid tie inverters. And I have detailed video where I did installation for this unit and the preview. Link is going to be attached into the description. And right here is a battery bank. It has 48 lithium iron phosphate cells, 455 amp hours capacity. And on top of this box, we have 200 amps JK BMS with an active balancer, two amps. Then we have a Heltec active balancer. This is able to balance cells using four amps. Then uh, right here is a Victron shunt. And uh, on the back side of this box, I have class T fuse to protect cells. On top of this box, I have two disconnects. One is just to disconnect batteries from inverter. And second is physical disconnect for both positive and negative wires. To monitor pack capacity and cells uh, health, I have three applications. One is for Victron app, second is for JK BMS, and third one is for Heltec BMS. For the connections, let's start from the roof. Right here I have six panels connected in series and then I have two arrays of six panels going down from the roof. So right here in this conduit box, I have four wires, two positive, two negative, going down from the roof right there. And then from the roof, this conduit going into disconnect box right here. And um, those two arrays joined right there. And then I have those wires going into my inverter. In the garage, here's the inverter, and uh, I have three conduits going into this inverter. Where left conduit, we have two wires going into, into this box and then into the battery. Then in the middle conduit, we have this positive and negative wire from outside disconnect box that we just saw from solar panels. And in the same conduit, I have these four wires going into my sub panel for CT sensors to measure what is the consumption of my house. And uh, then in uh, this conduit, we have four wires, leg one, leg two, neutral and uh, ground going into my sub panel as well. Same location where CT sensors is going. And basically that's all connections for this solar unit.
So right now this inverter works in a grid tie mode. So I have the circuit breaker connected to wires from a sub panel. If I want to switch this inverter to off grid mode, then I will need to reconnect those two wires to load circuit breaker and disconnect my sub panel from a grid. And this will enable me to run my house off grid just from this solar unit. And right here is my sub panel. Here is a circuit breaker, which is going into inverter that we just saw. And on a leg one and leg two, we have two CT sensors, which is measuring how much power consumed by my house and inverter pushing back same amount of energy. So here's how it's able to work in a limited to home power mode. In this table, we will see price for components only because all installation I did myself. So the price for parts is inverter did cost me $7,000, same price as the batteries. Solar panels and racking system did cost 3.4 thousand and the rest of the items such as conduits, wires, electrical boxes, etc. did cost another $700. So the total price for this system is $18,100. And here are the two screenshots from SolarC application. In January my system produced 275 kilowatt hours and in March 555 kilowatt hours. I haven't run this inverter in summer yet, but I'm expecting somewhere about 750 kilowatt hours to be produced. All right, guys, that's all about this video. I hope you will find some useful information. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask them. Also, if you have solar system that you want to share on this channel, contact me and we can shoot video about your system. And as always, thank you for watching and see you later.